Hey y'all, Nick Pomeroy here with PR Equipment in Kearns, Texas. Hey, today we want to shoot the first of a series of videos going over tractor basics. Uh, we've had some people kind of recommend that we would do something like this, just to kind of go over the fundamentals of tractors. Uh, you know, especially for, for people who may, this might be their first time around tractors, you might be shopping for a tractor. We thought we'd go into just some of the fundamentals, the things that you'll need to know, look for, and also kind of how to use your tractor. So the first one we want to talk about is the three point. So there are typically considered to be two ways to hook a, a rear mounted implement to your tractor, and that's either with the draw bar, which we'll talk about that later, or the three point, which on a compact or subcompact and, and predominantly utility tractors as well, the three point is the most common way to attach an implement to your tractor. So there's, there's a few different components. We're gonna talk about components. We're gonna talk about specifications because there's a couple different sizes to these things. We're gonna show how to hook this up. We're gonna talk a little bit about the, the item behind me, which is a quick hitch. Um, and so we're just gonna keep you kind of a general rundown of what the three-point is, how the, what terminology to really be thinking about, any adjustments you might need to make, you know, just things to consider. Let's talk about components and maybe a little bit about terminology. Um, so as the term states, three-point, you have three connection points. Two of those are the lower links, which what is what connects to your to your lift pins. Um, and then the top link is exactly what we call it, the top link. So this is your third connection. This is the fixed connection, and then the lower two links move. So this is what's gonna kinda always kinda keep that stable, your, your three-point stable as it's coming up, and then the lower two links are actually gonna do the lifting. So we got these uh, lifting links here that actually go to the lower lifting arms. Um, and then there's also some adjustments to think about, which we'll get into the, doing the adjustments here in a little bit. But I just wanted to point out, so on, and this can vary a little bit by tractor, but on this tractor, we've got a solid lifting link over here on the left. We've got, a, we've got an adjustable one over here on the right, and that's gonna be for leveling implements. You know, some implements may be welded a little bit off or whatnot. Sometimes there's a little bit of adjustability that you, or adjustment that you need to do to kind of keep it level. Your top link is something you'll be adjusting a lot. A lot of tractors will have some sort of a bracket here that will, all it does is keep it out of place. That's really nice when you're backing up to a three-point implement. It just kind of keeps it out of the way. Once you back up to it, then you can get to working on it. Um, but you pop that out, and so you can see the top length, and this would be the, the, the top link pin, right? And then you've got some adjustability here on your top link, and, and you'll find that you probably adjust this a lot more than you'll adjust that. One last thing to point out is, is what we'd, I'd like to call the sway links. Um, they can be sway bars. There's a lot of different terminology for them. Um, but these can either be outboard or inboard on this particular tractor and on a lot of compact tractors they're going to be inboard but on, on larger tractors you'll see them more outboard um, they can come in a variety of manners this is kind of a turnbuckle style adjustment you got one on each side sometimes they're pins sometimes they're just a number of different ways to secure them but on this we got these turnbuckles and they are inboard uh, we also like to say we have our adjustment here and of course our top link um, so that kind of goes over to the terminology and components let's talk a little bit about specs Okay, so as far as specifications go, th there's a number of different categories of three points. And what is changing in that is, is the size of the pins. Um, and so there's a category zero, one, two, three, and four. Typically speaking, if you're, if you're, and our customers are primarily focused on maybe the subcompact, compact, and utility range of tractors. And so that's gonna be your, typically your cat ones and your cat uh, twos. So there, there is uh, two different size of pins. The lower links are always a different size than the top link. Um, so for instance, this is a cat one pin and this is a cat two pin. So you can kind of see that there's a pretty good size difference there. This is a, a seven eighths uh, ounce or di diameter pin and, and this is an inch and an eighth. And so you can see on our lower links and that's where your, your lifting, link, lifting pins will go through. Um, you've got, the, this is a cat one. And so cat two, you're gonna see kind of once you get above 50 horsepower, and below 50 horsepower, typically you're gonna see a Cat 1. There is a little overlap in each direction just depending on how the tractor frame is set up. But obviously as the tractor gets larger, the capacities get larger, the pins have to get bigger. And so for, for a tractor like this, it's a 24 horsepower tractor, a Cat 1 pin is just perfect. Plenty of power or plenty of material there to lift whatever you need to do. So those are your, are your lift pins and there's different styles. We'll get into all that right uh, later. But, but what I wanted to point out is, is that make sure that you're matching you know, say a Cat 1 implement to a Cat 1 tractor. There's also some ways around that, but we'll get into that later. And then I want to talk quickly about the top link pin. So let's say for instance, uh, so here again, Cat 1, Cat 2, you can see there's a pretty dramatic difference there. We're going to be focused on the Cat 1. So 
Once again, we've got our lower link, we've got our top link. On our top link, this is a three quarter inch diameter pin, so seven eighths, three quarters. So we can see that, that that's gonna go through our top link, that's gonna go through our lower link. So there's gonna be two of those, one of those, and that's gonna complete the three links of our, of our three point. Okay, now guys, we've, we've got an implement. This is our 48 inch tiller, pretty standard implement for this size of tractor. So we're going to show how to hook that up. Um, so it's a little bit unique um, as, far, as far as it has the Cleva style pins. So each pin is supported on each side. It's a really nice way to do things. It makes things very strong. Um, but the first step in, in this process is we need to go ahead and remove these pins. So that way we can back the tractor up, make the connections, and we'll go from there. So we're going to just remove these pins and, and set them to the side somewhere. Now this is a little different if your implement has fixed pins, but the principle is roughly the same, right? So we still, we need to get the, the retaining pins off of there so we can back up to it and then we'll slide these on. But in this instance, we've got more of a Cleva style. So once those are removed, and we're gonna keep our top links secured for right now, we're really gonna wanna focus on the lower links. Um, and one tidbit before we really get cracking on, on backing this tractor up and all, it's safety, guys. So, I. I I can't stress enough, watch where you're putting your feet. As we start raising and things and things start moving a little bit, we need to be very careful about our foot placement and just being aware of our surroundings. So I'm gonna hop on the tractor, we're gonna back it up, get as close as we can, and we'll show you how to pin it. Okay guys, so we are hooking up our implement. I backed up, got a little bit closer to it. So now we can see that our lower link, our links are a little bit too low. On a small tractor like that, that's okay because they're movable, right? So we can, we can move these things up and down. But one thing else we can notice is that our pins don't quite perfectly align. Now on a heavier, more stationary implement, we'd wanna get closer, right? We'd wanna make sure that we were very close and that way the pins would slide in easier and we wouldn't have to really do much finagling with the implement. But on this implement, it's pretty light and it moves. So it's not hard to move this implement. A small box blade would kind of fit into that same category where you, you'd have a bit, a bit of movement with it, but where you'd have trouble moving it is maybe with like a, a three point mounted shredder, you may have a little bit more trouble. So I'm gonna come over here. Once again, tractor's off, so we're safe. Um, you can see we're just a hair off here. We're gonna bump that just a smidge. <clears throat> so now we've got our lower links connected. Everything is locked in, so we're good to go there. Now we just need to bring our top link in. <clears throat> so I don't know how we did that, because it normally never works like that, but it's almost perfectly adjusted. And I didn't pre-adjust it. Normally, there's gonna be some adjustments to it. So now we've connected our top link, and that's the connection for the three point. We don't have our PTO shaft on. We'll go into that in another video, but if we had our PTO shaft, this is when we would connect it. We would go ahead and just run it to that PTO shaft and slide it on there. But our three point is connected. We're ready to raise the implement and see if we're adjusted properly. So now we've got it lifted up. Be very careful, once again, of, of having that implement up in the air that that we're not bumping levers, we're not putting our feet under anything that can fall. But what I wanted to show you is kind of how it's adjusted. And so there's a couple, like say, there's pitch, right, which is adjusted here that we need to be paying attention to. We actually look pretty level, but we'll probably tweak it just a little bit. And then there's sway. So there's, there's sway here, which we're actually pretty, pretty solid there. Um, if, if for some reason there was too much sway to this thing, you could actually loosen those up and, and that way it would prevent that thing from sliding back and forth. Um, in some implements, it's okay to have a little bit of movement. In some implements, you want them very rigid. Say like this tiller, you'd want it pretty darn rigid because you want the tiller to follow the tractor. Um, and then the one other thing is the level. And if you'll come around to the back, we can see it looks just slightly higher on the, on the left side than it is on the right side. To be honest with you, I, I don't think you would notice that too much in, in out tilling. But since we're doing it, let's go ahead and adjust it. So you'll find before you adjust this or even the top link, your best bet is to take the weight off of the implement. It's a little hard to get this thing to turn if you've got any weight on it. So I let the implement back down all the way. And so now you can see that these adjustments are loose. 
And so because it was low on the right side, I want to tighten this up. So I'm going to, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. So I'm going to go this direction, which is going to tighten this, this linkage up, allow this arm to come up quicker and hopefully level that out. And we were slightly pitched forward. So I'm also going to take some adjustment here and I want to extend the length here. And just as a quick side note, when you get it to the point that you know that it's set properly, these little nuts here are designed to hold that in place. So you just take a quick wrench and just bump that each and that'll lock those in place. Cause if not, that vibration over time will let, allow those to move and then you'll, you'll be out of adjustment. So I'm gonna fire it back up, raise it back up and see if we've done what we wanted. So if you notice, it actually looks like we adjusted it a bit too far and now it's a little too tall on the right side. So you can play with that adjustment until you got it just where you want. And I don't want to overcomplicate this. That adjustment doesn't have to be perfect, right? It, it's as perfect as you want it to be. The fact of the matter is when you put this thing in the ground, the tiller is going to accomplish the same goal, even if it's a little bit out of whack. But you want it as close to level as possible. Some implements will need more adjusting than others. Okay, so we've got it hooked up. We've got our three point into place. Everything is looking good. So that's how you connect your three point. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to take the implement back off. We're going to show you what a quick hitch looks like. We're going to put that on the tractor and show you how that process changes. Okay. So now we've moved the tiller away. We've got our three point by itself again. And so we want to show you what this, this is what is called a quick hitch. Quick hitches can make your life easy, but they can also add some aggravation. Um, but if you're looking at buying a tractor for the first time, quick hitch makes a lot of sense. The key thing, the only real point that's going to cause you much aggravation is if you end up with implements that aren't quick hitch compatible. Most implements today, they're, they're starting to kind of get pretty standardized that they're quick hitch compatible. And what I mean by that is it has to follow certain specs in order to hit the, hit the proper points to, of connection for this, because these are fixed. You can't move these. So once again, we've still got the lower point, two points and then that top link connection. But what's nice is this stays on the tractor. So if you can see these hooks, all you gotta do is back up to your implement and just have it low and then lift up and it'll hook the, the three points on the, on the tiller or the implement. Um, the key thing is, is that you remember that, that like I say, you have to have quick hitch compatible implements. A lot of your older stuff may not be because there wasn't so much standardization and you know, maybe the width is different or, or whatever. You know, there, there was a lot of this differences that could be in, at play. But what we do know is, is that our tiller is quick hitch compatible and that we have this new quick hitch here that we're going to install in this tractor and show you what that's like. Um, and it can save you a lot of time and hassle. Hey, quick note guys. Um, so if, if you do have a tractor and existing implements and you buy a quick hitch, you need to be careful about one thing and it will a couple things, but the, the one we wanted to point out is, is it does extend how far back the connection is from the tractor. So a couple things happen there. One leverage, um, you, you're going to lose a little leverage and you won't be able to lift quite as much. Most of the time that doesn't matter because like this tiller probably weighs 600 pounds and the tractor can lift 1200. So it doesn't really necessarily matter so much when we start talking about, uh, on, on that scenario. But one other thing to keep in mind is a lot of times these PTO shafts between the implement and the tractor are cut to length. So if they were cut to length without the quick hitch and you install a quick hitch, you, you gotta be a little bit careful to make sure that you don't, you don't run too short or you don't overextend that PTO shaft and not have enough running inside of each other. Um, maybe not an issue. Don't, don't let that you know, dismay you because it, it's still a lot of times there's enough shaft length, but just be careful because we don't want you to, you know, pulling that shaft too far out and then, then hurting something or, or breaking something. Okay guys. Okay. We're going to go ahead and hook this, uh, this quick hitch up. It is, awful nice if you have two people and so I got Doug who's one of our technicians he's going to help me install this quick hitch and the reason why is is like I say you only have to install this once but when you go to install it you're going to have to pick it up a little bit you can do this one side at a time but it's awful nice if you can do it all at once so we're going to slide the lower pins through and lock them and I'm going to wait till Doug Gets his side through. There you go. Okay. So we've got both the lower links installed. Now we're going to pop the top link. And so now it's nice to have two people because he can hold that part 
while I bring this part into play. Secure that, now you can let go. So now we have our quick hitch installed. We've got our three connecting points, two lower links, uh, and then we've got our top hook. So what we'll do is we'll pull those handles back. That's gonna release the locks down here and allow us to back up to the implement. Um, and before we do that, I'm gonna show you a couple things we have to do to the implement to make it compatible, uh, but we'll come around and do that. So one thing we have to do on the implement side is if you notice the, the pins on the top quick hitch, they're actually slightly larger. So we've got these bushings. A lot of times this comes with a new implement, sometimes maybe not, all these bushings are available. And there's even special bushings like say if you've just got fixed pins, there's some quick hitch bushing, bushings for those too that are available that make it really nice. But what we need to do is install these bushings. Whoops, too big. We're gonna install our top link bushing. We need to install the other lower link bushing. We'll pin everything up. Now the best part about this is once you get this installed, if all of your implements are quick hitch compatible, that'll be the last time you gotta do that. It doesn't take away all of it though. I mean, there are still some adjustments that may need to be done, but it certainly makes it easier for one person to hook up a hook up an implement by themselves. Um, so like I say, the quick hitch is a really nice thing, especially if you're looking to get maybe a tractor package, go ahead and add that quick hitch in. It's a couple hundred bucks. I mean, I'm sure everybody's price varies, but I think it's like 200 bucks. Uh, you can have that quick hitch. You may have a little cost in the bushings, but at the end of the day, it's gonna save yourself a lot of headaches. Um, I hope that kind of gives you guys a general rundown. If there's something we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about, let us know. Uh, we'd be glad to help you out in any way we can. But I'm Nick Pomeroy for PR Equipment in Currens, Texas, and this was our video over, over basically three-point basics. Um, check us out on Facebook at PR Equipment. You can check us out on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our channel. We're always adding uh, videos like this, and we're going to be doing some more Tractor Basics video in the future. Uh, you can also PREquipmentSales.com. Or just give us a call, 903-270-0877. We'd be glad to help you with anything you might need as far as tractors or equipment is concerned. Thanks, guys.